Deluxe materials is well known across the pond in Europe, but they're not nearly as well known in North America. Deluxe materials has so many great products. So let's get on a video call with Deluxe materials founder, John Bristow, and have him bring us North Americans up to speed about his company and their cool products. So John, for the benefit of those who may not know, how did Deluxe Materials start? We started in 1973 and um, we were born really out of a need. I was a, a modeler and uh, I got a degree in chemistry and engineering and um, uh, we sought um, we didn't make a real business plan as such, and because we were modelers, we saw the need for products, and because we had the skills to, uh, I think, develop those products with their chemical knowledge, we got about and set about a journey to develop a wide range of products. There's over 100 products in our range today, really. Um, so, yeah, that's how it all began. No big strategic plan, and... Um, just just almost by accident you're best known in europe you have any history in the north american market the uh beginnings of the market actually in america which may uh, interest um modelers on your side uh in the u.s uh was quite interesting actually because we, we ended up trying to we ended up with a product called superfatic glue um which um actually solve the problems of uh, fumes that come with cyanoacrylate. So this was really an alternative for um, uh, to cyanoacrylate that had no fumes. People were, some people were finding themselves a little bit allergic to cyanoacrylate glues, and here was an opportunity, really in the era modeling. That's, that was the entry point. So what makes Deluxe Materials unique? We've heard this from a number of people, actually, our distributors in the U.S. They said, you know, John, what makes you special is the way in which you demonstrate demonstrate your products, either in articles or techniques. And uh, one of the a good example, actually, is uh, is this little device. It's on the back of our uh, catalogue, which you can get from our... And it's actually a glue chart um, that tells you um, what materials... These are the two materials. You select the material you want to bond, and then you will reference the product with the part number that it can glue. So that's one thing. Uh, so helping them choose. But we also have some other devices. Here's an, an example of uh, a, ch a wall chart, actually. Uh, again, with a railway scene, and the various products around the chart direct you to the possible uses for that product, whether it's sticking ballast down, sticking grass on the fields or whatever, you know. So again, that's a quick reference chart. So it's something that guides you, particularly where your brand is essentially or, or relatively unknown, really, in the U.S. Once you know what product to use, then what? I mean, you've got to, once you've chosen it, give the, give, give the modeler a bit of help. And in the catalogue, again, there are, there's a story here, one on uh, how to use our various waters that we've got. We've got a range of uh, water products, solid water, aqua magic, and we give you the storyline. So each of these pictures shows you the type of water in this application, whether it's still water or maybe a waterfall or, or, or something like that. We show you which, which one uh, to use. Good. Uh, what are a few examples of some specific products? Uh, we've got we've got uh, an example here uh, about card glue, for instance. This is a um, uh, um, a product for bonding card models. Uh, I think they're very popular. You've got laser cut models. I think card is also there on the need to bond card stock. So these models can be put together quite cleanly and neatly. Um, <laughs> And again, I, I think the labeling is the other thing, is putting a clarity of what the product does on the front of the label for clean, the instant card modeling. You know, tells you on the label, really. You haven't got to read it on the back or anything like that. So again, making that journey. So, but it, I thought it might be quite interesting to show people how this particular product works. Here's a couple of pieces of cardstock. 
one of the things you can do here is run a tiny piece of the glue. And with this glue, this card glue, less is more. So the less you use, the better it works. So you can bring two pieces of card together like that, and they stick instantly. Amazing. And just, it means you can get on with your model. In fact, um, this particular model uh, that I just showed you, we did some tests. We built seven of those models in the time it took with, with Rocket Card Glue, this model, uh, seven of them, you know, and uh, in the time it took to build one with PVA glue, right, we were able to build seven. Another clever product we've got is um, Tacky Wax. Wow, what's that? <laughs> Tacky wax. It's a sticky wax, actually, and people don't know what it does, but so it, need, it needs um, understanding. In fact, there's a great one, actually, for holding on to uh, screws. So you can actually grab your screws and you can put screws down uh, where you want. So small pieces you might have dropped in the bottom, you just pick them up. So it's one of those handy little things. I think everyone in America should have one and put a tacky wax on their workbench. It's your hero product, really. John, that's amazing. Any specific products to model railroading? Uh, we decided that cleaning the track, and we, we thought we needed to develop some special technology that would be proprietary. And actually, funny enough, as you know, Joe, we actually developed a product with a 1.9 dielectric constant. We looked at the technology in that area, and we came up with a product which not only cleaned the, cleaned the, um, cleaned the track, but left an invisible conducting film on the surface, right? And in the kit of, of the, of the, that comes with this, you have a cleaning swab, little brushes to get between the points and, and stuff like that. And such was the demand, we've actually had to launch a bigger, bigger bottle of that product uh, here in the United States. Um, uh, it's a 250 mil bottle, which uh, is available through our, uh, from all good hobby shops, really. But, um, but I think, well, how does this work? The idea, really, was when we looked at the grime and the dirt that was coming off, uh, off the underside, combined with the dust that's falling onto the track, uh, you end up with quite a, uh, a toxic concoction that's inhibiting the uh, conduction of electricity. And we looked at some chemist chemicals also that would um, stop the sparking or the micro sparking that interferes with the, that you were talking about too. Um, that same chemistry comes and is used in commercial aviation fuels and things like that. Uh, but is um, it is unique technology. So we put all that lot together. And the idea was to, once you clean the track, actually um, leave a conducting film that protects the track further. So the idea of loosening the dirt and having something that releases the dirt was, was a key thing. And there's a little demo we show people um, at, at the show. I'll just show you. What we've got here are two, two bottles, one with a conventional track cleaner, um, on the left here, and one which is uh, Track Magic, which has got the 1.9 um, dielectric constant. And this is the, uh, the dirt that we found. We synthesized that from, um, um, from our using our, our chemical capability. So if you actually drop, you can see the dirt doesn't really disperse, whereas in the Track Magic, dissolves the dirt away. So the idea is to get hold of that dirt, loosen it, absorb it, and take it away. And as the track magic evaporates, it actually leaves a chemically bonded, not an oily surface, a chemically bonded material on the surface of the track all, um, uh, to protect the track going forward. How do we know it's there? Well, actually, we took that track and we put it, um, we basically put it in salt water. And uh, we looked at the track um, after two weeks of total immersion. And these were the results, actually. 
So the bare rail, which was untreated, right, actually showed heavily corrosion marks, whereas the track magic track was almost corrosion free. Now this is over salt water, so highly aggressive test really. You wouldn't want to normally subject your railway track to salt water. But that was that proved the existence of a chemically bonded film. And that's what we wanted to really know that that chemical that we put into the track magic was working at that surface level really. What about product safety? As we'd already started a journey with some of the you know uh, alternatives or making safer products with products like Superfabric, we we continued that theme and um, we have some very good examples here. For instance, plastic glues. We know these are volatile, right? These are liquid cements. So we developed our own bottle. We thought because the neck of the neck of the bottle I thought was quite important to stop evaporative emissions. And we ended up with a product which had very, very good solvency, but it had one, one advantage. It didn't evaporate anywhere near as quickly. And we showed this. Uh, we, we illustrate that, really, with some evaporative tests. On that journey, we discover some really interesting chemicals. Being forcing yourself to do something that's not easy was took us on a journey, and we discovered another product, another called the which we've launched now in the US called Plastic Magic 10 Second Cement. This is packaged in a similar way, but this is even even less evaporative. In fact, it's almost close to zero. You know, Obviously, it does evaporate eventually, and it's been a real success in Asia, and we've decided to put it into North America. This is actually non-flammable, but we knew if we're coming into plastic modeling, um, uh, we needed a very, very good putty. And we, again, talking to modelers, we knew that they are working with um, solvent-based putties, sticky, shrank, and I thought, no, we can do better than this. And so we've, we've made a formulation, really. It's a water-based putty. There is a touch of shrinkage, but nowhere near as much as these solvents. And, of course, you can put it on with your finger. Wet your finger and smooth it across and just paint it, and it polishes up like a piano key. John, those products are just awesome. Lots of things in the pipeline, you know. Um, we've, we've just launched a product here uh, this year called Looks Like Glass. Now this, we had the formulation ready just before Christmas, and it, I, we put it through all the health and safety stuff, and it came out harmful. And I thought, oh, no, we can't launch this. And we were literally about six weeks before the Nuremberg Toy Fair. So we sat down, and it took me about three days, and we come up with a non-harmful formulation for that. It's a, it's a fluid that you uh, dip your small uh, plastic pieces in, and it makes them look like glass if they've been scratched or something like that. Another of your products that looks intriguing is called Liquid Gravity. Yeah, it is, actually. I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, we, um, we, people were asking us uh, for a weighting system, right, for um, both the, the scale model aircraft people and the railroad people, because there's a lot of railroad uh, uh, builders that want to add weight to their, their, their loco or whatever, or their wagon. And um, lead, of course, is the common way of doing that. We weren't prepared to do that. That's totally against it. We will be, that's outlawed as a retail product in the UK. And we, it needed to be poured into small, small cavities. So we've ended up with a product here. That bottle actually weighs a uh, quarter of a kilo, you know. So that's, that's, you know, people say, whoa, what's this? John, this has been great. One final question. What about the future? Yeah, so what are we going to do in the future? I think what's our plans and our strategic plan? Well, I, th I think um, we want to continue along the two things. We want to continue along the environmental thing, really, and using, you know, constantly searching for new, safer chemicals and improving our environmental impact. But more importantly, I think we eventually want to, I think, win the hearts and minds of the North American uh, modeler really, to be uh, respected for what we do, 
to be talked about where modelers meet in clubs and things like that. Um, and we, we are quite proud of what we want to do, but we want to take pride in helping people enjoy their hobby. Look out for us and buy our products from your local hobby shop. And they're distributed by Horizon, by uh, Hobby Time, and by Wolfers. And uh, please support your hobby shop. And uh, I'll say cheerio and thank you for listening in.